finally, you're going to pick uh, your profession, right? They describe a profession in The Witcher as what you do for a living. Uh, but it says it does not limit you as far as how good you can be at certain skills. So you might be a, a butcher, but it doesn't mean that you don't know magic or it doesn't mean that you don't know how to ride horses well. It just means that you're going to be really good at some things because you do them for a living. Well, each profession has five basic parts. OK, they have the defining skill, which separates this profession from all others. The second uh, part is vigor. Uh, which is kind of uh, reminds me of mana. So your vigor is how much what they call primal chaos that you can channel through your body uh, safely to cast spells and perform you know rituals and, and uh, inflict hexes. As you use your vigor um, to cast spells, you know, that vigor goes down and you have to wait for it to come back. Then you have magic perks. So professions with inherent magic have magic perks. Uh, which are like spells and incantations, hexes, you know, what they call signs. And I'll get into that later on. So some of the professions, you know, are inherent to magic and so they have magical perks. Then you have skill package, which uh, represents basically the, the general, you know, learning over the course of an apprenticeship that you would get. And then finally, you would get your starting gear. You choose your profession and they have these these for us and they have a lot of information here along with your defining skill your vigor if they're magical or not uh, these skills um, that they they get perks in and their basic gear you know a bard a craftsman a criminal a doctor mage man at arms merchant well, I thought this was cool you can play merchants in the in this game uh, being a priest and then finally you can be a witcher you picked your profession. Now we're going to start looking at your starting statistic. Basically, it tells us that there's two different ways that you can set up statistics. You can either roll these up or the GM can assign you points. And it has this nice little chart here for you. I love charts that the GM can say, OK, well, uh, the game type is average or skilled or you know, this team is heroes or these teams are legends. This is how many points that you would give them so that they'd be able to assign those to their st stats. OK, if not, you're going to do it by rolling, which is you're going to roll a D10 nine different times, one for each of these statistics. And you're going to fill in that number. And you're going to re-roll any ones or two. So you're not going to have anything that's lower than a three. It talks about each one. It's basically intelligence, reflexes, dexterity, body, speed, empathy, craft, will, and luck. And then there's going to use these statistics to fill in your physical stats. Okay. So, um, and this is your body stat plus your will stat divided by two this is going to give you so if, if, it, if it was five was my answer then i'm going to have 25 hit points 25 stamina five in recovery and 50 to stun so i'm going to fill that all in on my character sheet okay and then it's going to give me the hand hand to hand table and it tells me if my body is a seven or eight i'm going to get to roll a, a 1d6 plus two for a punch and a 1d6 plus six for a kick so yeah your body and will divided by two will equal uh, out your, your physical table. Now you're going to move on to pickup skills. So you had your profession gives you some skills naturally. But then also you've had a life other than just work, right? So you picked up some, some other skills. So each skill has a value, a potential value of zero through 10. Okay. And so if you have a value of zero, that means you don't have that skill at all. And you're not going to get any bonuses to that. Now, if you have a one point in that skill, um, that means you, you possess that skill and you'll have some of these, you'll have availability for some of these bonuses. And it tells us that 10 is the highest that your skill can go in one, in one area, except if you have a racial modifier. Your skills package, like I said earlier, is determined by your profession. You have, you have to pick through um, 11 of those skills that are you know, part of your skills package. And they're going to give you 44 points to spend in those 11 skills. And it has to be at least one point in each. And you're going to spend 44 points in those. And you just get those automatically. And then you're going to also have pick up, what they call pickup skills, which are points determined by your intelligence and your reflex stats. Under intelligence, they have a list of skills. Under reflex, they have a list of skills. Under dexterity, a list of skills. And they talk about each one of these having a base. So like if you have a base of 10 or a base of 13 or 16 or 20, um, then you get to do different things inside of that skill. So at certain base levels, you're going to gain additional uh, attributes in that skill. And so one of the examples I was looking at was the teaching skill. Okay. 
So teaching in this game is uh, the skill of explaining other skills to, to other people, right? So let's say I knew uh, deduction and I wanted to teach that to a party member. Well, if I had this skill teaching, I could, I could attempt to do that. Since teaching is under the intelligence stat, and let's just say I had an eight in intelligence and a three in teaching. So that would give me an 11. Okay, so that would give me a base of uh, higher than 10. So that would mean that, um, and it, it tells us in, the, in this description, a base of 10 or more uh, means that I can walk a person through a basic demonstration that they might have not, uh, not always understand. Now at a base of 13, it says you can teach basics of a skill to diligent pupils with, with no issues. At a base of 16, you can teach even uninterested students the higher levels of a skill with time. And at base 20, you are a master of teaching and can connect with anyone. Your lesson immediately makes sense and rarely ever have to be repeated. And they have that for each one of these skills. And so as you're leveling the skills, uh, you're, you're hitting these, these new uh, base levels. And so not only are you, are you you're getting higher probability of success, but you, um, you, you're gaining a few things as well. Now that kind of brings us to what is the skill resolution like in The Witcher? And they had that breaking down into three different areas, opposing against an antagonist, opposing a difficulty, which is something that the GM will set, or opposing a target's difficulty, uh, almost like a target's stat. And so first of all, let's say you're, you're opposing an antagonist and um, you'll roll a, a D10 plus the skill level and appropriate stat level. So let's say it's intelligence uh, plus skill of X, that's three. And you add those together plus your D10 and the highest roll wins, okay? And a tie, it says, goes to the to the defender. So if you're if you're trying to do um, something that is against opposing a difficulty, which would be, let's say, the GM saying you're picking a lock, for example, then the same type of thing, except for the GM's going to pick the difficulty level. And um, where was this? They have a pretty straightforward. If it's easy. Uh, like breaking breaking down a rotten door, the difficult the DC what they call it the difficulty check uh, is going to be ten. If it's average, it's going to be fourteen. Challenging is eighteen. Difficult is twenty. Nearly impossible is thirty. So they have these these different difficulty checks depending on how hard it is, and the GM just assigns that. And then of course if you're if you're opposing a, a target DC, and it says for example um, you're facing down a wolf on the road. He has no time for this and casts friend to, to wild can, wild kind, weaving magic into the mind of the wolf. The wolf's will uh, multiplied by three is 12. Uh, if he can roll his passing uh, spell casting skill, roll above 12, his uh, spell will succeed. It, it will add his spell casting skill, nine, and his will, which is 10, which gives him a total of 28 against the, the 12 roll of the, of the wolf, then he easily wins. But they also have uh, modifiers. And these are circumstances that can either help or hinder your ability to perform certain skills. If you have the right parts and you're trying to build something, you might get a plus. If you don't have the right parts, you'll get a negative. Or even the lighting, or if you're drunk or sober, or uh, if you're tired, or if it's a hostile environment. All these things are in here with different modifiers that might get you give you a plus two or a minus five or uh, whatever. The GMs can just say, hey, this is it's really dark out there. You can't really see what you're doing. So... You go ahead and get a minus four to that. And then you can level up your skills. So you're not just stuck with these same skills uh, forever at the same 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 level. You can actually level them up. So you're not only leveling your character, but you're leveling up these skills with time. And what they have is what's called um, IP, which are improvement points. And you get these after the the session is over, the GM will award, award them to you. And it talks about, um, it gives a suggestion not to give out more than six IP um, improvement points to any character unless they did something like totally epic. And it talks about the different um, reward levels. Like if you see somebody that did something very impressive, you might give them four for it. Or uh, it says, did if you did something that blew the GM's mind, you might get nine IP rewards for it. And this is when you've used your skills like very wisely or in some creative way. And the GM will jot down, hey, I'm going to give him two points for that you know, at the end of it or whatever. Uh, but it, here's the real cool part. This is what I thought was very interesting about this book was, is the skill trees. Let's say you're, you're a merchant right here. Okay, this is defining skill and you're a merchant. 
you can actually go into three different branches of being a merchant and it does this for each class and where you can be three different types of a witcher or three different types of a you know healer or whatever and it gives us great little rundown here when it talks about it says very rarely do two people do the same job exactly the same way this is especially so when it comes to the loosely described professions in the witcher rpg a profession skill tree outlines three variants on its core skills so you can customize what abilities uh, the character learns based on how they come at their professions so it talks about uh, three different types of merchants that you could play for example one could be a, a broker and they'll be focused on the acquisition of items and having them in a party would, will mean that a party never goes without gear ammunition or components so that's one type of merchant you could be a broker or you could be another type of uh, merchant uh, that's called a contact who has a lot of connections and informant informants and having one of them in your party uh, would mean that it would never be hard to get information or uncover secrets and then a third um, a third type of merchant in this would be a havocar who use their skills to enhance their influence and gather a, a group of criminals and deadly merc mercenaries around them quickly so having them having a havocar in the party would mean uh, could be the key to navigating the seedy under seedy underground of a city you could even uh, choose to dabble in e in each path, creating a jack of all trades who's who's pretty able in all situations, but not a stabilized. So you, it tells you that you can pick, um, you know, one of these threes to specialize in, or you can do a little bit of all three. And like I said, each profession has their own skill tree and that you can kind of pick from. And so if you're high in intelligence, you might want to pick this one. If you're high in empathy, and it kind of has this empathy in, in, in uh, brackets right here, uh, but it's not limit, limiting you to that. It just says, hey, if you're if you're high in that area, you might want to look at doing this. Um, and it has these these three different skill trees for each one. You know, criminal and doctor, and mage, man at arms, the priest, merchant, and finally the witcher. And I think that really makes each character unique. And so, if you had three witchers in your group, you could each be very different types of witchers depending on your skills depending on the skill trees that you chose and uh how far into the skill trees that you chose to go so your pl your players are going to be very different so we picked our race we ran our life path and got our history we've picked a profession we've picked our stats we've selected our skills our pickup skills and now it's time to get some coin right now show me the money so how much money am I going to start out, start out with? And in the Witcher, they have what they call currency crown. Okay. Like a crown, like you put on your head and each profession is going to roll according to their chart. Okay. And it has this nice little chart here. Again, I love charts and, um, uh, it's going to show you how many coins that or how many crowns that you're going to begin with. Okay. So if you're a bard, um, you'll get a 120 coins times 2d6 so you're gonna roll 2d6 and you're gonna get and get 120 crowns times that okay and if you're a doctor you're gonna get 150 crowns times 2d6 right and so if you're a witcher you're gonna be the poorest you're gonna get 50 crowns times 2d6 and so you're gonna be really poor but you're a badass so you don't really need it and then you're gonna start outfitting yourself that's this is the last part of character creation all right and so they have tons and tons and tons of stuff there's i think there's what 25 29 30 pages of of stuff that you can buy everything from weapons to armor um, everything that you can think of and each one has its own type of stat and cost and all those type of things and so some of uh some of the swords for example uh will have different effects to them it tells your damage based upon a die value whether it's 5d6 or 4d6 plus 4 uh, it talks about the concealment if it's a dagger you you might be able to fit it and hide it in your pocket uh, if it's two-handed broadsword well no you're not gonna be able to hide that in your pocket and uh, you might not be able to hide that at all and then they go into the the weapon descriptions over here so they have the table of the different types of swords for example then they have kind of like a little blurb about each one of the swords that you can get you know all from all the way from the iron long sword uh to the tor war which is like a badass sword and uh, it kind of does that with each one so you can get all these you know tons of different weapons to pick from and then you're going to move along to some armor because you got some awesome weapons and but you're out in the world and you're going to need some armor and each piece of armor has what they call an ev uh, which is your encumbrance value. How much is this stuff going to weigh you down? Yeah, some of them are going to increase your um, 
or decrease your uh, reflex and your dexterity. Okay, so if something's very heavy, of course that goes to you know you got to figure that your reflex or dexterity dexterity are going to lower as well. You have you know head armor torso armor i mean all types of stuff very very detailed again each one goes into the cost the effect that it might have the availability the stopping power the armor enhancement that you can put on them um, all types of neat stuff and so it goes very detailed different shields that you can have and leg armor and then again it goes through the armor descriptions of each type and then it even has uh, elder folk armory and different types of armor and weapons as well so they have their own uh, the, their own type of uh, uh, weapons and uh, armor, stuff like that, that gives you uh, some extra stuff because of their, their skill level is higher, then you get that. This is uh, um, alchemical items, so like alchemy items, right? And that you can pick up and you can buy these and uh, or you can make them if you're an alchemist which is pretty neat so yeah you can buy these different uh, alchemy uh, items uh, which are kind of like one-off little things that you can do like an acid solution uh, black venom which will poison a target which does you know x damage and it you know it tells you the commonality of them if they're rare or common or whatnot uh, it tells you the weight which they're all very light and how much they would cost so if you want to pick up a bunch of this stuff and and have it in your in your kit it'd be awesome so sterilizing fluid so if somebody gets hurt it can sterilize wounds um, those type of cool things numbing herbs quick fire so you can like pour pour out a quick uh, pour out some of this quick fire and it'll start uh, it's extremely flammable it says there's 50 percent chance it will ignite each time it's exposed to flame or sparks of any kind they also have what's called armor enhancements and so uh, these are different enhancements that you can put on your armor. Let's say you have a helmet on, you could have maybe a face mask on it or one of those like neck guards put on it. So some of them might give you, um, you know, bleed resistance or uh, fire resistance, those type of things. And so it goes into, you know, awesome detail uh, on this type of stuff. So then they talk about transportation. They have all types of different uh, transportation that you can have from a carriage, a cart, um, a cutter, a horse, mule, ox, a sailboat. I should get a sailboat. Uh, a sailing ship, a uh, war horse, you know, all these things. And then they have different types of saddles that you could put on your horse um, from just a regular saddle, saddle or a cavalry saddle, a racing saddle. You put blinders on your horse, gives you different stats to calm your, your mount or if you have racing blinders, gives you a plus two to calm. And you can purchase these type of things to kind of upgrade your mount. So then you can pick up all types of different tools and stuff. So you're, you're kind of gearing up, ready to go out, right? It's different tools. And some things you'll be able to do without you know, tools, but other things you won't. And so let's say you're an alchemist. Well, you can't just like whip up some alchemy and, you know, with, without an, any, without an alchemy set. Right. Uh, so you would need that for, for that. And then they have a plethora of general gear available, you know, from rope to uh, hourglass, shackles, soap, tarps, tents, everything that you can think of, uh, food and drink, lodging clothing all types of stuff that you would want to pick up and uh throw in your backpack or throw in your horse uh or whatever your your um your mount is whatever where you're leaving on and so that you would have that and be ready for whatever comes your way or at least get you to the next stop where you could pick up something if you absolutely absolutely had to have it so yeah there you have it that's pretty much it for the Character creation, I know it sounds like a lot. Of course, it would take nowhere near this long to, to just roll up a character. I bet it would take you probably, you know, 20, 30 minutes at most. Um, just depends on how much you want to read and go through things. Uh, next time, I'm going to be going over the magic in this world and also the crafting, which is super cool. Have a great night. We'll see you next time.